ODA 성과를 주제로 곽재성 경희대학교 국제대학원 교수님께서 장단을 맡아주셨는데요. 교수님께서는 아센 뉴호 장학재단 이사장과 외교부 정책 자문위원을 역임하고 계십니다. 그럼 교수님께 진행 부탁드리겠습니다. 네, 교수님 진행 준비 되셨으면 부탁드리겠습니다. Uh, professor, are you ready? 네, 여러분 안녕하세요. 방금 uh, 소개받은 박재성입니다. Uh, 전 세션 저도 옆에서 잘 들었는데요. Uh, 역시 한국 ODA 이후에 이 분야 가장 uh, 중요하기도 하고 uh, 이쪽으로 나아가는 분야에서 계속 이어받아서 우리 s d a 와 교육 회복이라는 So, 이런 대제목 하에 under, 그 특히나 uh, 코로나19 극복을 위한 한국 교육 ODA 성과에 대해서 recovery. 다양한 교육 ODA 관계자들 모시고 논의를 해보도록 하겠습니다. 아, 한국 교육개발 협력 사업이 코로나19로 인해서 uh, 어떻게 변화했는지 그 변화의 과정과 그 성과는 무엇인지에 대해서 그 선생님들 모시고 말씀을 나누도록 하겠는데요. 우선 방문한 분을 모셔서 다시 10분 정도 시간 The presenters and give them 10 minutes each for their presentation. The first uh, presenter is Ojina, who is a professor at the College of Nursing at India University. And she is also a member of the accreditation committee of the Korean Accreditation Board of Nursing Education, and she is also the project manager of International Cooperation Leading Universities Foster Program. Her presentation is uh, titled. Nurses' Competency Thank Improvement in the New Normal Era. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Jina Oh. Um, I'm a nursing professor and the project manager of a leading university project of inter international cooperation in India University. I would like to explain my experience of ODA project and I explain the importance of the nursing competency improvement in the new normal era. As we know, the COVID-19 pandemic has put global citizens um, under unprecedented pressure. Actually, the healthcare workforce have been struggling to cope even before pandemic took hold. Especially nurses have critical roles and responsibilities to take care for patients during the uh, pandemic. They will continue to be at front line of COVID-19 and they have to patient care in hospital and actively uh, involved in assessment and monitoring in um, communities. While all over the world are suffering uh, from COVID-19, um, however, the developing countries suffer more. So I think we have to go together. I've been focused on uh, the third and the fourth of SDGs. As you know, the third goal is education and uh, education and uh, well-being, uh, good health and well-being. And the fourth goal is quality education. Actually, the, uh, the education of nurses will, uh, for nurses is very essential to the uh, quality of care. Anyway, I'm working at Inje University and uh, with five hospitals. The Father John Lee Itesak is a Dr. Speicher in Korea. Uh, he was a South Korean doctor and a Catholic priest. I'm very proud of him because he graduated at medical, Indian Medical College. The, he emphasized on human being and the heal the world uh, with interfaith activity. He was nominated as the person who brought the honor to his alma mater, Inje University. Through the uh, John Lee's spirit, Inje University were performed the last of international cooperation project. Uh, 
it is my first experience of ODA project. Actually, I performed my uh, project for Sri Lankan nurses. The title was the establishment of a, a bachelor degree course in the nursing school for establishment, enhancement of Sri Lanka uh, health status. The International Development Cooperation Program workshops for nurse leaders of Sri Lanka was held over 20 times during six years. The uh, nursing curriculum development and the teaching and learning strategies and the evaluation method, uh, et cetera, were held in the Colombo and Kandy province. The nine Sri Lankan nursing leaders studied at Inje universities for getting master and doctor degree. Three of, uh, some of them, they returned uh, Sri Lanka and came back their own institutions. However, three of the uh, three of graduation students uh, hired at the new faculty of nursing at Colombo University. Uh, after four years from this Sri Lankan project, the Sri Lankan government decided to build new nursing faculty at Colombo, uh, uh, Colombo universities. The nursing curriculum for virtual degree was developed by this project. Finally, January 11th, uh, 2018, inauguration of Faculty of Nursing was held at University of Colombo in Sri Lanka. It was an historical event and uh, evidence of a fruit from Korea ODA project. The same year in 2019, maybe 95 students, new students entered the Faculty of Nursing, Columbia University. I had lectured for new nursing students about the nursing philosophy and for new uh, faculties about roles, about nurse educators, roles of nurse educators. I emphasized that you will become, you should become a nurse leaders of Sri Lanka. One more, our um, outcome was the train for emergency nurses. We developed emergency training program. Uh, many nurses working at the emergency room were trained with our program. Uh, when they finished this program, they could take a diploma. So Sri Lankan nurse established the, uh, the national uh, Emergency Nurses Association. As you remember, maybe two years ago in Easter 2019, uh, there was a terrorist attack targeting many random peoples uh, in Easter day at Colombo. At that time, the trained emergency nurses cared for patients there. I was very proud of with them because I think it is a real good outcome from ODA project. As the experience of Sri Lanka project, I start again uh, th about the nursing improvement in Lao PDR from 2020 to 2026. These days, the second years, the title is Enhancement of Nurses competencies through remodeling uh, of nursing curriculum and improvement of a healthcare environment in Lao PDR. Uh, because uh, Inja University has performed the ODA project with Lao PDR, I've experienced special lectures for Lao nurses before then. So although the project was kicked off because of COVID-19, the MOU was postponed. So on this June, the MOU ceremony was held with a synchronous webinar. Actually from COVID-19, almost classes 
uh, for last four semesters opened online, not only Korea, but also the Lao PDR multimedia system was very needed. So we supported the multimedia systems. Without IT system, we cannot do anything. Furthermore, I developed educational materials with Lao language about COVID vi virus pathophysiology and uh, prevention of infectious disease. Okay. Yes, this film is the first Lupik workshop at Vientiane last summer. Even though COVID-19, I visited Vientiane and met my partners. Like IDCP workshop of Sri Lanka, uh, Lupik workshop will be continued until they can do it by themselves. Uh, in Lao PDR, the, I organized the three committees, Nursing Curriculum Development Committees and Nursing Practicum Development Committee and National Nurses License Examinations Committees. So in that time, uh, I, can, uh, I did the workshop uh, with their committees. Yes, I didn't, I will not stop the, this workshop until they can do it by itself. The budget is 2.5 billion won, uh, about the $2 million. And there are three subject goals. The first one is remodel and upgrade UHS, the nursing curriculum. Actually, UHS, the leader, just, uh, just one for virtual degree nursing courses. So they need the remodeling and upgrade it. And the second is a strengthen professors' competencies. And third is the improvement of a low healthcare environment. So the final goal is the leading role performance of nursing education in Lao PDR and improvement of national nurse care healthcare indicators. A global pandemic needs strong nursing staff engagement in clinical management, awareness and knowledge and knowledge exchange and public safety. I ask your concern. Thank you for my, uh, your attention. Thank you very much, okay. Professor O. Actually, the projects that you've introduced to us are quite meaningful projects to be engaged in the era of COVID-19 pandemic. I would like to take this opportunity to extend my appreciation to you and the staff members who are making efforts to increase uh, the competency of nurses. I'd like to invite the uh, next speaker. Um, he is the director of the Division of Bridge Program of the Korean National Commission for UNESCO. He will deliver a presentation under the title of Building a Bridge to Educational Recovery Through the Bridge Program. I would like to give you 10 minutes for your presentation. Please go ahead. This is Jun Ho Ju in charge of bridge program of KNC, which aims to help marginalized people have right to education throughout the non-formal education sector. Mm, I'm very glad to have a chance to introduce our program in the very meaningful event. Uh, the title of my presentation is uh, Building a Bridge to Educational Recovery Through the Bridge Program. Uh, to, share with, to share with you my presentation, uh, I'd like to uh, proceed with it in order of um, uh, introduction to the bridge program, uh, responses to the challenges of COVID-19 and insights observed under COVID-19. And I have some pictures of the program to share with you. Uh, I'm not sure how well you recognize UNESCO. Uh, actually, UNESCO, uh, 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 the UNESCO stands for the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, uh, which was established in 1945, right after the World War II, to contribute to the building of peace and sustain of development all over the world. And under each constitution, every member state is recommended to establish a national commission for UNESCO to spread out and implement the missions of UNESCO within and outside of each member state. 
Actually, South Korea joined UNESCO in June 1950. However, we didn't establish national commission for UNESCO at that time. Because unfortunately, the Korean War broke out right, right after joining the UNESCO. So the Korean National Commission for UNESCO, KNC, was officially founded in, founded in January 1954, around three and a half years later after joining the UNESCO. Uh, even though setting up the KNC needed way more time rather than we expected, there were some precious memories for the help of UNESCO, and still many Koreans remembered that help. Actually, during the post-war rehabilitation, UNESCO became a stepping stone towards the reconstruction and development of Korea by supporting the construction of printing factory for primary and lower secondary school textbooks. So due to the educational help from the UNESCO, we Korean people could continue teaching and educating our children and youth with these textbooks. So based on power of education, we Korean people could reconstruct and develop our country by ourselves. In line with this context, KNCU have been working actively to strengthen cooperative ties among the UNESCO, the Korean government, and many other UNESCO-related organizations within and outside of the Republic of Korea. So the bridge program is also one of, the, uh, one of these kind of efforts of KNCU as well. And another important background of, of the program is lack of education and relevant education goals of international community. Now, according to the UIS, UNESCO Institute for Statistics, there are still 750 million adults who cannot read and write, and more than 260 million youth and children who are out of school. As, you are, as we all know, well, lack of education exacerbates poverty, housing, gender equality, and many other cross-cutting issues all over the world. So to deal with this matter, international community have been working together uh, to spread out the right to education, sharing the same goals for many years. Currently, Sustainable Development Goal 4, which is to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning for all, is following previous MDG 2 and EFA. <coughs> and under these educational goals, uh, KNCU has started Bridge Program in 2010, uh, Bridge Africa Program in the Sub Saharan African region, and Bridge Asia Program in the Southern Asian region have been implemented around 10 years. And all, all, all of the country projects uh, under the British Asia and Africa program have been terminated sequentially with great results. And based on insights that came from the previous British Africa and Asia program, uh, KNC launched, and, uh, launched a second phase of British program in 2020, which is called as UNESCO NACAM's partnership program um, for SG4, uh, because we are inviting national commissions for UNESCO as our partner organizations under the second phase of British program. Um, actually, National Commissions for UNESCO uh, have a mandate to implement the missions of UNESCO within country level. And also, almost all NACOMs are under the Ministry of Education. That means uh, they could make a country project more scalable with their connections to various educational organizations, uh, spreading out the, the effectiveness and impact of a country project into the national level, not just into the project site. And aside from it, we have one more program uh, named <coughs> one more program uh, named Bridge Sejong Program, uh, which is also called uh, Partnership Program for UNESCO King Sejong Literacy Prize winners. Uh, the UNESCO King Sejong Literacy Prize is one of the international literacy prizes of the UNESCO, and it was created in 1989, supported by the Korean government. Uh, it rewards the activities of governmental agencies or non-governmental organizations uh, displaying and achieving effective results in contribu contributing to the fight for literacy. So as of 2021, we have a program with uh, National Commission for UNESCO and a program with Laureate of King Sejong Literacy Prize. Uh, to summarize our program, I'd like to show you a program framework which was drawn based on result-based approach. Uh, the framework has a hierarchy with four levels consisting of one goal, two levels of objectives, and relevant activities. Uh, the goal of the program is to help our partner organizations achieve sustainable development goal for in their countries. Uh, to achieve it, we set two levels of objectives. The first level, the first level one is kind of an intermediate uh, objective, which is to enhance access to quality education for marginalized people. Uh, as I mentioned before, there are still many marginalized people who excluded from formal education. So we are trying to increase educational opportunities for those who are 
out of school or over the age of attending schools remaining illiterate. Uh, to achieve it, we set three short-term objectives. Uh, each short-term one is very closely related with relevant activities. Uh, the first short-term one is improve access to education for marginalized people. To achieve it, we are supporting activities of policy development of non-formal education and lifelong learning education sectors. And also we are uh, supporting activities of uh, um, operation of community learning centers. Actually, community learning center is a focal place for lifelong learning in remote and rural areas for educationally marginalized people. And also we are supporting activities of uh, provision of learning programs such as literacy programs and equivalency program for primary and rural secondary school levels and various technical and vocational education and training as well. And the next short-term objective is improve quality of education. And to achieve it, we are supporting activities of teacher training of non-formal education sector. And also we are supporting activities of development and di di distribution of uh, learning materials to the to learners and teachers under the bridge program. And these types of activities under the two short-term objectives are forming every bridge country project under the bridge program. That means bridge Lao project or Timor Leste project is made up of this kind of activity. And the last short-term objective is to build the capacity of partner country, including KNCU. I believe that it is very important factor uh, under the bridge program because uh, every country project under the bridge, pro bridge program is uh, designed and implemented by our partner country. To, to increase effectiveness and impact of our program, it is very important factor. So to deal with this issue, we KNCU are trying to hold annual training workshop for bridge program partners, uh, sharing the recent information of non-formal education and lifelong learning education policies and strategies, and increasing various insights from the project site, and strengthening the relationship among bridge program partners. Uh, uh, Considering the time I have, I'd like to skip some slides. Mm. Uh, um, now that I have introduced our program, uh, I'd like to share some responses to the challenges of COVID-19. Uh, same as other international development cooperation program, which program has been in hard time under the pandemic. Uh, however, uh, we are overcoming the obstacles to some extent with three main factors at the program level. Uh, the first thing is the increased accessibility uh, through pre-established online corporate, uh, cooperative system. Uh, actually, in the case of bridge program, uh, all of the main processes of project management from the proposal to evaluation are designed and monitored based on the uh, based on online uh, platform uh, like Google Drive using Google Docs, Google Slides, and Google Sheets. Uh, this platform enables us to work and collaborate together on a real-time basis. And in, in addition to that, under the pandemic that keeps us from reaching our project site, we added online tools for uh, video meetings between partner and outcomes in addition to the pre-established monthly online reporting system. And second one is cooperative efforts for localization of project implementation. Actually, every country project is designed with ownership of NACOMS for UNESCO and related government organizations uh, based on national education development policies. Um, furthermore, to make project more localized, we encourage local experts related to the International Development Cooperation Program to take part in the project implementation. And last one is a, project, a special project for health literacy to promote and strengthen responsive capabilities to COVID-19 for marginalized people. Mm -hmm. Under the special project, a community learning center is functioning as a hub for raising awareness of COVID-19 response, disseminating hygiene products to learners to enhance access to education. As of 2020, uh, um, there were four special projects uh, Laos and Timor Leste under the second phase of bridge program, and Botswana and Eswatini under the bridge Africa program. Uh, all of these projects were implemented with the help of government agencies related to health and sanitation. 
In Laos, uh, we cooperate with the Ministry of Health in Laos, uh, adding to the pre-established partner modalities in Bridge Laos project. Uh, the special project in Laos mainly consists of um, mainly consists of Uh, public health and hygiene workshops, uh, distribution of health and hygiene items like face masks and hand sanitizer, and, and print and distribution of posters on COVID-19 prevention and response. Uh, in case of Timor-Leste, we also cooperate with the Ministry of Health in Laos, adding to the pre-established partner organizations in the uh, Timor-Leste project. And, uh, under this special project, uh, the main activities of the special project in Timor-Leste were made up of workshops linked to communities and unit and universities for public health and hygiene and distribu distribution of health and hygiene items like face masks and hand sanitizer. Uh, uh, there are some pictures of responses to COVID-19 in Laos and Timor-Leste. Uh, <coughs> When it comes to the sustainability factors under the COVID-19, uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to tell the uh, partnership of National Commission for UNESCO, uh, which, uh, uh, which makes the bridge program into a government uh, cooperation project under education-related ministries. And the second one is a unique government system of bridge program, which is called as Bridge National Committee. Uh, it is an operational advisory and cooperation structure involving representatives from education-related education sections of central and local governments, uh, strengthening the link between educational policies and government organizations. Also, there are more sustainable factors like ownership of partner countries through project localization, strengthened access to educational facilities through special projects for health literacy, and stable and pre-established online monitoring systems with partner outcomes. Um, even though we are overcoming the obstacles based on sustainable factors at the project level, uh, there are still remnants of challenges of COVID-19. Actually, every country project uh, under the bridge program is run in the uh, vulnerable, underdeveloped and remote areas. Uh, that means uh, there are still limitations of uh, uh, educational alternatives uh, suffering from uh, suffering lack of internet environment and educational content and curriculums for remote and contactless education. Also, there are difficulties of mutual M&E because of, because of lack of project site visit by KNCU. And also, we are losing many opportunities for offline peer learning based on international uh, partnerships among various stakeholders. Uh, as I wrap up my presentation, I'd like to talk about the cooperation strategies for the uh, post-corona era. Uh, uh, based on insights that came from project implementation under the pandemic, uh, I, I learned that we have to reinforce the role and accountability of government of partner countries in ODA project to increase efficient management of environmental risk at the government level and also additional research on education development policy of partner countries should be needed in the post-corona era to timely grasp on-site demand. And also, I think that we have to strengthen support for improvement to education policies in partner countries like uh, distance education or online education management information system. Considering the corona era, we have to address health and hygiene risks as key assumptions of pre-designed uh, PDMs in existing projects. And also we have to apply health and hygiene risk as a cross-cutting issue into logical frameworks when we design new projects. Um, when it comes to sustainable development goal four, uh, we have to expand su support related to target 4.5 for enhancing equal access to education, and 4.A for inclusive and effective learning environment for all uh, to overcome the losses in education for the vulnerable due to COVID-19. And last but not least, I believe that we have to strengthen linkages uh, between SDG 3 for good health and well-being and SDG 6 for uh, climate and sanitation and projects related to SDG 4. Mm. 
Uh, there are some pictures of the program. Uh, if you allow me some time, I'd like to share with this picture. Uh, these are pictures for class, class for disabled and other women in Malawi. And last one is a picture of a secondary education teacher training in non-formal education in Eswatini. Uh, this is a picture of a newly built community learning center in Botswana. Actually, this community learning center is built with the help of uh, Sumijo, a world-renowned soprano vocalist and UNESCO artist for peace. So they are, they are assembled at the CRC. Mm. Uh, it is a picture of early childhood development education in Botswana. And this is a picture of English literacy measurement tool and certificate in Eswatini. And these are pictures of literacy class for adult women in India and vocational training for adult women in Pakistan. And these are pictures of classes for equivalence program and out of school children in Laos. And these are pictures of health and hygiene workshop and teacher training in non-formal education in Timor Leste. Uh, this is um, a last picture. Uh, it, it just seen you know, of CRC and toilet under construction in Timor Leste. Uh, that's all I have. I prepared for my presentation. Uh, thank you for paying your attention. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you very much, much Director Zhou. While you're listening to your presentation, I just uh, came to with the thought uh, that those who are out of school and others that still have a great passion for learning and the bridge program is focusing on the vulnerable and the isolated uh, ones and I hope uh, that as the bridge program uh, will continue to, to last and also uh, your idea about the uh, cooperation project is quite insightful. The next uh, presenter is Han Song Min, educational researcher of Daegu Institute for Creativity and Convergence uh, Education. And uh, Mr. Han is a former educational researcher of the Teacher Policy Division, Ministry of Education, and former teacher at Daegu Software Meister High School. His presentation is titled The Changed Education Field, the Era of uh, Digital Learning Era. Good afternoon. Uh, I was introduced. Uh, I am educational researcher of Daegu Institute for Creativity and Convergence uh, Education. It's a great honor and pleasure to be here as a presenter. I will be talking today about a changed education field in the era of digital learning. Uh, first, I would like to give you a brief introduction of the Tegu Institute for Creativity and Convergence uh, Education. We are placed under the Tegu Metropolitan Office of Education, and our history goes back 48 years. And uh, we focus on uh, science and technology, and we focus on creativity uh, without the barriers of different uh, subjects. Uh, uh, we are uh, uh, collaborating with the uh, Bangladesh uh, Ministry of Education since uh, 20, 2005. Uh, so the Tego Office of Education and uh, and the Ministry of Education of Bangladesh uh, have been engaged in ICT exchange and cooperation uh, since uh, 2005. And uh, we have provided invitational training uh, in Korea and uh, we provided this uh, training uh, for 10 days in June uh, in 2019. We made a music video and we also provided uh, classes and also opportunities to experience the Korean culture. And then we also, of course, visited Bangladesh as well and provided um, uh, support there. However, due to COVID pandemic in 2020, uh, we needed to make changes to the invitational training program. We had to ter transform our offline uh, learning into an online program. And what we did was what we expanded the number of uh, students. So we selected 40 teachers uh, from Bangladesh to take part. The Ministry of Education was in charge of uh, providing smart pads, Bluetooth keyboards, and also earphones uh, to uh, the uh, course recipients. In 2021, uh, we went a step further from 2020, and we provided real-time video training and conferencing in the form of webinars. 
And in order to enhance uh, the capacity building, uh, we provided a KLIC and ICT classroom project. project. And uh, it was an interactive, real-time video training and conferencing. Uh, in uh, the uh, training program, the Korean Education Ministry in 2019 uh, established a, a ICT classroom in Bangladesh. And uh, we developed uh, education programs that can be carried out uh, in that classroom. Uh, due to COVID-19, uh, we made many changes, and I would now like to elaborate on the changes in three parts. Uh, the first is uh, we maintained communication and uh, exchange, and in order to do that, we built a community with the students. In 2020, uh, there were 60 Korean and Bangladesh teachers on the neighbor band platform. In 2021, you can see that uh, there were 67 people and uh, 54 people in the ICT uh, classroom. At Tegu Lead, we have teachers uh, from uh, elementary, middle, and high school teachers. And uh, these people are very committed to educational ODA. And most of the teachers have been taking part since 2019. And, uh, other uh, educational offices are taking part uh, in this project as well, and we are uh, facilitating communication between them. And so through Neighbor Band, uh, we uh, share our online uh, program, and uh, we can also check attendance uh, based on the contents provided, and uh, people can also use the chat function to post questions and uh, receive answers. And uh, sometimes uh, discussions are held uh, through the chat rooms, and uh, people can build uh, relationships and so what we did to uh, further relationship was we matched uh, one Korean teacher with four to five Bangladesh teachers, and we provided group mentoring and group training. And as you can see, uh, they, these groups went off on their own, and they also made their own chat rooms on Neighbor Band, and they were free to ask uh, many uh, questions. And of course, uh, AI translations uh, actually was a great help. And Bangladesh uh, teachers are not very uh, fluent in English, and so we used uh, translation apps to provide uh, training and uh, exchange in their language. The second effort that we made was to provide uh, content uh, for common modules. In 2020, the 17 uh, educational offices uh, developed uh, a uh, online course, and we uploaded this regularly on uh, the neighbor band because they covered topics that Bangladesh teachers wanted to learn about uh, regarding digital literacy and utilizing edutech and AI. And uh, we did not want to simply watch the videos. We provided guidelines on how to watch the videos. And we also attached uh, the videos with nine assignments so that the teachers would not simply watch the videos, but also take part in activities. So uh, we provided guidelines in uh, basic and intermediary form. And uh, the teachers were able to utilize the videos based on their level of uh, competency, and we uploaded uh, the assignments on the neighbor band, and we asked the teachers to upload uh, their assignments as well. And the Bangladesh teachers were actually very active in posting their completed assignments, and the Korean teachers were uh, very impressed. What you see here is an assignment uh, related to AI, and the second one is a uh, assignment introducing Bangladesh uh, via video, and the third is a presentation on introducing Bangladesh and uh, their own family members. So based on our experience of 2020 and 2021, we also provided uh, real-time video training and conferencing in the form of webinars. So as a follow-up of KLIC and ICT classroom project, uh, this is what we did. So in KLIC, what we did was we provided contents uh, by carrying out a, a survey in advance. Uh, if you look at the contents, uh, you can see here 
we have uh, prepared courses for preparing real-time video training, documentation and presentation, shooting and filming, creating and sharing videos, online collaborative learning, and unplugged activities in artificial intelligence. In the ICT classroom project of follow-up courses, uh, we provided uh, theory and practice of ICT utilization classes, understanding the functions and basic usage of hardware and software, and we also shared uh, sh uh, real cases. And of course, after we decided that we were going to carry out real-time uh, online uh, courses, we were concerned. Uh, we were not sure if we were able to carry out the courses because of the poor infrastructure in Bangladesh, and we were also concerned that teachers might not be able to connect uh, to uh, Zoom. Uh, we selected Zoom as our platform, and we were concerned that uh, teachers may not be able to utilize uh, Zoom or other apps that we decided to use uh, in our course. Uh, but despite uh, these uh, concerns, we carried out seminars with the teachers prior uh, three times, and uh, we carry out uh, many measures, uh, and we consulted with many experts in order to overcome these challenges. And uh, we also developed our, our own material to provide uh, online through our Zoom courses. And uh, we also talked with the Bangladesh uh, teachers to uh, about their schedule. And uh, we carried out uh, this training for a week from 3 o'clock uh, Bangladesh time. Uh, on Monday, July 26, 2021, we were very excited and we carried out the first regular real-time video training. Uh, we had a um, interpreter and we had an assistant a teacher who checked the chat rooms and we had another assistant teacher who served as an engineer who checked the attendance and who checked all the other technical aspects. And uh, the Bangladesh uh, teachers, uh, they uh, signed on from their home and their offices. And uh, in order to commemorate the fact that uh, we were meeting online, uh, we all drew hearts with our arms and we took a uh, snapshot. So as I mentioned earlier, we were very concerned, but we carried out this uh, real-time video training for uh, five days, and all 42 Bangladesh uh, teachers uh, attended uh, the course. And uh, of course, uh, the connection uh, was not perfect, and we couldn't uh, cater to everyone's uh, different situation, but I think that overall, the uh, course was successful. Here you can see the outcomes of the training that was carried out in 2021. Um, first, Bangladesh teachers wanted pre-recorded uh, courses, so we uploaded some on a neighbor band. And uh, the real-time training video, I think, uh, was a very important memorabilia for the participants, and it was also a driver. Uh, for innovation. As uh, for the group consulting, uh, based on the success of our real-time training, we decided to further this. And so we have operated real-time consulting for the Bangladesh uh, teachers, and we were also able to enjoy many different outcomes. So here you can see uh, the questions or the questionnaires or the surveys uh, that we provided to the Bangladesh teachers on what they wanted and any know-how that they uh, hope to share with us. And we provided uh, this consulting uh, based on themes. So instead of uh, providing this to all the teachers, we categorized uh, consultation into themes. And for instance, we had one on metaverse, and the Bangladesh teachers uh, could uh, take part in the metaverse uh, experience. And um, although there were some connection issues, I think that this was a very exciting session. And so with active uh, participation for about uh, five days, more than 30, day, 30 teachers uh, took part and they got new information. They were able to experience uh, the new themes. And also with the ICT classrooms, uh, we analyzed the status of the ICT classroom projects and the needs of the teachers. And uh, so we provided uh, courses on how to edit videos, how to manage and maintain the ICT classroom projects, and also uh, teaching learning methods of uh, ICT using this platform. And so we provided eight courses in all. Also, we provided uh, real-time courses where uh, 
the participants could ask questions and engage in discussion in real time. And uh, here you can see that uh, the classroom project curriculum uh, that was established. And uh, through sustainable exchange and cooperation, uh, we have uh, provided video contents uh, regarding Korean traditional culture, and we are doing this to enhance the understanding of each other's uh, countries. Also, Uh, for Korean teachers who are very busy with their daily uh, work, in order to motivate them, uh, we also made sure that their efforts uh, were known to the media, and this was our way of uh, motivating the teachers. And uh, we also uh, had a uh, forum where we shared our achievements and results. And uh, this was an opportunity for all the teachers to share uh, best practices and uh, best cases. After the training uh, through the band, uh, we can see a continued and sustained exchange. If you look at the survey results in 2020 in terms of adequacy, efficacy, and uh, impact and sustainability, uh, we achieved around 92.8 points in five categories, and uh, there was also a demand for real-time uh, classes, and we reflected this, and in 2021, in the same five uh, categories, uh, we uh, scored 94.8 uh, points. And next year, we are going to uh, enhance the project by providing in-depth AI classes and also by reflecting the Bangladesh curriculum into the real-time training program. And I think that uh, real cooperation was possible because uh, uh, this training program is for the mid to long term. Uh, furthermore, uh, the Bangladesh uh, teachers, I think it is important for us to be able to meet them face to face. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, despite the fact that movement was limited due to COVID-19, uh, it's inspiring to see that you use Naver Band and that you created a learning community with the teachers in Bangladesh. I'm very impressed uh, by this uh, presentation. Thank you for sharing uh, your experience. Uh, now let me introduce the last presenter. The last presenter of Session C is from CLECA, Korea International Cooperation Agency. A director, Yang Hee-kyung. She served as the senior education specialist as well as former research fellow of CARIS. She will deliver a presentation under the title of CLECA Education Sector Strategy in the Pandemic Era. Please go ahead with your presentation. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Yang Hee-kyung, director of Koika SDG program. Today, I would like to talk about the activities of, of Koika. Uh, the Korea's aid uh, agency, uh, which is in charge of international cooperation uh, between Korea and other developing countries, particularly in terms of uh, the concessional aid. We've uh, pursued ABC program as a part of COICA uh, activities, and we all know that uh, the COVID-19 pandemic is going beyond the health crisis. Rather, it has a very negative impact on education. So I would like to talk about our mid-term strategy in response to COVID-19 situation. As you can see on the screen, Koika, back in 2020, when the COVID-19 virus spread it, decided to come up with a systematic response to the emergency situation caused by COVID-19 pandemic. And we just came up with this ABC program to provide relevant aid to the developing countries. So A stands for Action on Fragility, which is about emergency support for the vulnerable countries, like a test kit, facial masks, or uh, the diagnostic facilities. 
in the general uh, education or a campaign activities uh, promoting uh, the hygiene related activities such as uh, washing hands and B stands for building capacity which is to provide medical staff competency building programs to our partner countries. And also, uh, we just uh, engaged ourselves in providing program to develop uh, the epidemiological investigation uh, specialist in our uh, partner countries. Uh, COICA uh, actually constructed and, and provided 10 to 15 uh, large hospitals in our uh, partner countries, and we provided a relevant uh, the COVID-19 treatment facilities. Uh, uh, like a walk-through test uh, centers or uh, the booth as a part of building capacity program and systems for a comprehensive uh, partnership. And we provided relevant funding to four partner companies uh, to further promote a comprehensive partnership. So the ABC program was a comprehensive system to provide integrated response to the COVID-19 situation and around $150 million was uh, supported and around 38 million people benefited from that funding. And that fund was provided as a part of emergency funding. And COICA has 44 offices around the world. And we engaged not only the COICA uh, offices in the countries around the world, but also we actually supported 116 countries and uh, while you're implementing 24 uh, rapid uh, response programs. Uh, when it comes to the school education sector or the vocation education uh, center, we provided COVID-19 related uh, response kits such as facial uh, masks, uh, test kits, or uh, campaign materials. Kind of um, uh, the uh, education materials to encourage people to wash their hands or have a kind of etiquette when they cough. So we just provided uh, the uh, training materials or the workshop materials to the relevant uh, education agencies in our partner countries. Furthermore, e-learning uh, was a kind of uh, the sector which had a great demand. However, in the developing countries, the e-learning infrastructure was not relevantly established. So we provided the needed equipment uh, through the education centers or universities that we worked uh, together in the past. We also provided the contents uh, development resources to boost uh, the spread of e-learning in a relatively short period of uh, uh, time. So when it comes to the e-learning, we spent $1.5 million benefiting 430,000 people, helping them uh, address uh, the education loss caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. COICA internally comes up with mid-term uh, strategy for education and sector with uh, the uh, adoption of SDG. We just came up with the first phase of uh, the education-related uh, mid-term strategy. And currently, we are working on uh, the second phase of midterm strategy, targeting um, the period between uh, 2021 and 2025. And we also uh, have a linkage or kind of connection with a new uh, diplomatic policy of uh, Korea, such as new southern policy or uh, new northern policy. So when it comes to our international cooperation program, we reflect the new initiatives in, in terms of the Korean diplomacy. So overall, we just came up with a vision of inclusive development through quality education, which is closely related to SDG goals. And we all know that there is a serious concern over the equality of education. So we is spend a lot of resources for uh, the support of uh, the vulnerable uh, people in terms of uh, equality of education. And we 
uh, just provide the programs in terms of the literacy programs or the training material, the education material or programs provided to uh, those who are vulnerable. And also, secondly, we uh, provide the programs for uh, the tar uh, teacher training because the teacher's capability matters a lot to achieve uh, equitable and high quality uh, education. We also care for those who are out of school, particularly the youth out of school or the adult women who uh, do not have uh, the opportunities for relevant education. And they are uh, the targets that we spend a lot of time and resources for support in terms of the education sector. And the uh, youth or the young um, the adults who are isolated in remote areas are also uh, another target for our intensive uh, investment. And the second part is uh, the digital education. In our response to the COVID-19 pandemic, we faced with the demand for digitalization of our education infrastructure, and the ABC program was a emergency response program. And as a part of the ABC program, we provided e-learning support, and that e-learning support activities uh, have been developed in a bigger scale uh, at the international level. So a lot of uh, the education projects are related to the digitization of uh, uh, the learning in centers, particularly uh, not only in uh, the university education, but also uh, even in uh, primary schools. So when there is a health emergency or the crisis occurs like the COVID-19 pandemic, the education should be provided without any interruption by digitalizing or digitizing uh, the education infrastructure. There is the uh, the second, the midterm goal of COICA, and the third uh, midterm goal is a TBET and higher education for youth empowerment. We emphasize the partnership with the partner countries, and the Ministry of Education of Korea uh, tries to build uh, the partnership in the field of higher education, particularly focusing on TBET and the secondary or higher education. As uh, mentioned in the previous slides, uh, the first uh, strategic goal of uh, COICA in its midterm uh, plan is related to uh, SDG. For uh, like a quality education for learning outcomes, and we focus a lot on the improvement of academic achievement. Uh, of uh, children, particularly in terms of basic skills. We focus on the Middle East countries and the Southeast Asian countries, particularly the conflicted areas. So we can help uh, the education in the children, uh, for the children in the refugee camp while uh, empowering uh, them uh, through uh, the medium of education. And the second midterm goal is related to the digitization of education and the media or the methods. Here in Korea, the KMOOC uh, has been newly introduced and gaining popularity. So the uh, MOOC-like system is widely demanded in uh, Southeast Asian countries and also when it comes to the African uh, region based on the lessons from uh, the COVID-19 pandemic situation, there is a growing demand for digitization of the education infrastructure, including uh, online uh, learning. And uh, uh, third, uh, the midterm uh, strategy is related to the TBET, improvement of TBET or training and vocation the technical and vocational training for the youth, which is related to the SDG 4.1. So we are targeting uh, the young uh, adults or the youth uh, and the teachers in developing countries with regard to the digital training program. And when it comes to the higher education field, we engaged ourselves in programs targeting uh, the youth or young adults so they can uh, have a relevant economic means to support themselves. Koika actually has a history of engaging such a program uh, for quite some time. 
and also in developing countries, uh, there are efforts uh, being made to increase the enrollment rate of uh, the young youth in higher education institutions. And the Kalika is providing uh, support in line with uh, such effort of the partner companies. When we uh, design our mid-term strategies, we it put priority on support for uh, the vulnerable, particularly uh, children, women, or the people in conflict areas. And also, we focus on evidence-based project. So that is a key trend, uh, one of the key trends of uh, the ODA. So ODA project should be pursued based on data. And outcomes should uh, be focused when we design a the aid project. So COICA uh, is faced with an imminent task of collecting and the outcome related data, uh, uh, such as uh, the improvement of academic skills of uh, children when we uh, pursue uh, the children education programs. And also, with regard to the TVET uh, training, we try to collect the data with regard to the improved uh, livelihood of, of the youth who got the TVET. So I think they are ongoing tasks ahead of COICA when we pursue our uh, support programs. This concludes my presentation on the title of uh, COICA Education Sector Programs in the Pandemic Era. So I just uh, briefly on. Uh, the past activities as well as its future uh, plan. Thank you very much. This concludes my presentation. Thank you, uh, Director Yang. Koika is uh, taking uh, is playing a pivotal role in terms of economic cooperation of Korea with uh, developing in countries. I believe that Koika will play a bigger role in the future as well. We will now invite uh, all the presenters. Uh, we have about 10 minutes for discussion. I would like to first thank all of our presenters uh, for your presentation. We have actually received uh, quite a lot of questions, but due to time constraints, I I think I will be able to ask uh, one question for each presenter. So I will give you time to think about the answer. So first, uh, uh, Yi Won had a question for Professor Oh Jin Ah. After the project in Sri Lanka was uh, completed, uh, did the recipients or the participants of the project gather together to study further? Did you feel uh, a need to establish a graduate program for nursing? I think uh, the question is uh, perhaps uh, Sri Lanka uh, perhaps felt the need to establish a program where they can foster nursing leaders in the future. Uh, the next uh, question is uh, for all presenters. I think uh, uh, Mr. Han Sung Min uh, can answer this question and also Chu Jong Ho can answer this question. How do you ensure that Korea Education Management continuously monitor the implementation of digital learning during the pandemic? And what will be the measuring tools you use to ensure successful implementation of digital learning and revision of the national curriculum during the pandemic? Uh, you have mentioned this in your presentation, but I think that there's a lot to consider with this question. So uh, this is the question. How can we effectively uh, measure uh, the implementation of digital learning? And then. Uh, uh, lastly, this is a question for uh, Ms. Yang. In the post-COVID-19 era, what should be the priority agenda in, in the education sector? I really enjoyed your presentation on ABC program. So this question is about uh, the future program of COICA from a, a comprehensive perspective. So I'd like to ask each presenter uh, uh, to give answer to the questions. Um, actually, I'd like to allocate uh, two and a half minutes. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, we actually were funded by the National Research Foundation and the Education Minister. And so when we are evaluated, one of the indicators uh, is whether the project is sustainable in Sri Lanka. 
So we monitor that because we are evaluated on that criteria. With this uh, university, uh, the country uh, actually uh, invested uh, 20 billion won. So uh, the first uh, national nursing uh, faculty uh, has been established in Sri Lanka, and the faculty there is very working hard. And uh, we have uh, three uh, graduates, and uh, although we are not uh, providing uh, direct support, uh, but uh, as uh, their mentor and uh, former teacher, we continue to provide the support that we can when they wish to further their uh, study. And as you mentioned, uh, there is a need for a graduate uh, program uh, in Sri Lanka. And uh, there is also great demand by the Bangladesh uh, Education Ministry to uh, set up a graduate program. But uh, from our side, from the Korean uh, Education Ministry, we do not have any programs uh, that set up graduate schools. Uh, our, most of the programs are focused on the undergraduate program. And uh, so when they are pursuing education uh, after the project, uh, they have to pursue that independently for now. Uh, I think uh, uh, the need uh, for a graduate school is only there because uh, of the accumulation of education thus far. Director Chu, so could you please answer to the question? So we are um, engaging in a development cooperation project. The biggest task uh, ahead of me and my team members is uh, the measurement of uh, the outcome of the development cooperation projects, particularly in the field of digital learning. Actually, that is not a frequently uh, visited uh, the area when we uh, proceed with our development cooperation projects because our projects are focusing on the isolated or the marginalized ones, particularly who are living in remote areas. So basically, uh, those remote areas uh, do not have sufficient infrastructure. So if I look back on our past projects, I am not able to come up with a relevant uh, answer to the question, but we, I fully understand that the digital learning has been a big uh, topic in uh, this uh, pandemic era, and even after uh, the pandemic era, we need to think about the digital learning. And to the best of my knowledge, digital learning or uh, the, uh, the ultimate objective of digital learning project uh, should be pursued with uh, the, uh, the end state in our mind. And based on and that end state or the final outcome in our mind, we can come up with the relevant uh, the procedures or the methodology for uh, our pursuit of project. There uh, could be some issue with the digital literacy because uh, the learner's capability to accommodate the digital learning matters a lot to the impact of digital learning. Uh, then we can come up with a digital literacy program and also uh, we need to come up with uh, the relevant indicators when we engage ourselves in um, the development cooperation project for the marginalized people in remote areas. So, the different activities should be designed first, and the relevant indicators uh, should be established uh, to measure uh, the impact or the outcomes of the project or programs. The digital learning itself should be aligned with the national level education policies, and that is uh, what each digital learning related program should uh, consider. I think uh, this is one of the hottest topics in the educational sector. Digital learning in the COVID uh, pandemic era is being seen as a new uh, method for education, but how are we going to measure the effectiveness is uh, something that is being deeply considered by the sector. But as I mentioned earlier, last year and this year, uh, in our case, uh, we uh, continued uh, to exchange uh, with the uh, teachers in Bangladesh, and I mentioned five categories in which we evaluated ourselves. Uh, compared to last year, uh, this year, the satisfaction level has increased uh, based on the survey. And one of the key reasons was that we did not simply provide uh, 
content to be viewed online. We provided uh, real-time consulting and the teachers were able to ask questions face-to-face. Uh, -face. And uh, we were able to have frank discussions about the issues uh, in uh, respective uh, education systems. And this sort of uh, lively discussion, I think, has uh, enhanced the overall satisfaction uh, level. And when we're talking about uh, measuring effectiveness, uh, I think that is an area that we also need to think about uh, more. But what is certain is uh, that a blend of online and offline activities uh, is more effective. I'm reminded of an experience of my own. Uh, when it was online, I could uh, monitor uh, in real time. And so I actually replaced uh, one uh, instructor that I was not happy with. Uh, next, I would like to ask uh, Ms. Yang uh, to answer the question that was asked to her. So we are uh, actually holding an international education forum um, for two days, yesterday and today. And in terms of COICA, actually we are working with the developing countries as partner countries. And when we pursue uh, the ABCE programs, uh, we just uh, came up with the realization that we need to focus on specific areas because uh, the Korea uh, doesn't uh, is not a largest uh, donor uh, country. And actually we need to uh, be very keen on um, identifying the relevant uh, specific areas well we need to make uh, investment in and uh, currently uh, the five to six year long-term project uh, take up like uh, 60 percent of the total resources uh, of uh, koika and once we uh, actually identify our koika project for the year 2023 then it will last like five or six years up until 2028 or 2030. And based on the outcome data of those projects, we uh, will measure uh, how, um, how large the impact of our support program was. So while you're uh, working on the design of our future projects, we realign in the past uh, projects as well as the future uh, the activities. So when it comes to the basic uh, skill education, we focus on SDG 41. And also when it comes to the higher education uh, program, we focus on uh, POP or SDG 4.3. And so what we actually working on or focusing on increasing the accessibility to education as well as improving the quality of higher education. And also uh, another uh, area of focus is uh, how we can um, converge ICT technology into the learning sector and how we can uh, collect relevant data and measure uh, the relevant outcomes of our project. That will be our uh, next five-year plan. It seems like you all gave us the concluding comments. Uh, 2030 seems uh, far away, but uh, I believe uh, you are saying that what we do now is uh, determine so what will happen in the future. So thank you for sharing your experience and insights. Uh, I would like to thank all the presenters. And with that, I would like to conclude the session.